Hey you guys, good morning. Um, I'm gonna try to make this video quick. Um, the baby's about to wake up and I'd like to get this done before she does. Um, today's video is going to be on starving the flesh, feeding the spirit, okay? Uh, but first, let's pray. Father God, I thank you for another day. I thank you for another opportunity for all of us to walk closer with you. To, uh, to strengthen our relationship with you and to, to let Jesus into our hearts and to let him change those areas in our life that need changing. Father, I pray that you would speak through me. I pray, Father, that this message would touch the hearts and the spirits of those that are watching and listening, and I, I pray that your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so um, first of all, I have a heart for believers who are still being driven by the flesh and who are still willfully living in sin and justify it. And there's a reason why uh, the Lord asks us not to sin. You know, and I've shared this in my other video. It's not because he wants us to live a boring life. It's because uh, he cares about us and he's trying to protect us. Just like any parent is trying to protect their child. They want the best for them. They don't want them to walk into a trap. They don't want them to put themselves in danger. So, um, uh, being driven by your flesh and willfully living in sin, it does have spiritual um, consequences. And um, it's important to uh, put off the desires of the flesh because it strengthens your spirit, okay? Um, so, and Satan knows this. Satan knows that if he can entice your flesh, if he can uh, set a trap for you and, and dangle something in front of you that would um, speak to your flesh and make your flesh want to uh, to feed itself, then he will stifle your spirit, okay? Because when you're feeding your flesh, you're uh, essentially starving your spirit. But when you starve your flesh, your spirit can get stronger and, and uh, it's more powerful, okay? Um, and I'll give you a good analogy. So it's like if you had um, two dogs, okay? Um, a white dog and a black dog. And I don't mean race. I don't mean, so don't take it that way. Um, but if you have a, a white dog representing good and righteousness and uh, walking in holiness and obedience to the Lord versus um, a black dog, which represents evil, which represents sin, which represents um, flesh and desire, you know, whichever dog you feed the most, that dog is going to get the strongest. You know, the dog that doesn't get the tension is going to be weak and it's, um, it's not going to have the strength. Okay. So it's important to feed the correct dog, feed the good dog. Don't feed the evil dog. Right. Um, also that's why, um, fasting is so powerful it's because even when uh, us as believers, when we uh, make a decision to fast and pray, we intentionally uh, withhold food from ourselves with the intention of praying. It's because even when you're starving your flesh of its basic daily need of food, your, your spirit is more powerful. So it's like, you know, here's your prayer. And when you starve your flesh, it, the prayer just, it's more powerful. Okay. So starving the flesh feeds your spirit. Okay. And also reading the word. Um, but first let's get into some scripture. Okay. I'm going to try to keep this video short. Mark 14, 38, uh, Jesus says, watch and pray lest you enter in into temptation for the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay. Um, so Jesus is telling his apostles, like you got to watch out. Like it's, it's a spiritual battle. Okay. And Satan will continually try to tempt you. So you have to be mindful and watchful of these things because even though your spirit wants to, your flesh is always going to be weak. So it's important to uh, not feed your flesh. Next is Romans 6, 15 and 16. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey? You are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. Okay? Romans 8.1 says, There is therefore no condemnation to those whom are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Okay. Think about that guys. All right. Next is Romans eight, five through eight. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death. Okay. That means thinking with your carnal mind. That means thinking with 
uh, letting your flesh uh, guide your desires and guide your choices. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Okay? It's important to, to know this, you guys. A lot of you guys don't know uh, a lot of the stuff that's in the Bible, and that's why I share, because knowledge is power. And the Bible says my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So just trying to educate you guys, okay? Um, Galatians 5, 16 and 17 says, I say then, walk in the Spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. Okay, so Paul is saying if you're, if you're feeding the flesh, you're not walking in the spirit. And if you're walking in the spirit, you're not feeding your flesh. And these two things conflict. They war against each other all the time, you guys. Just like when Jesus said... Uh, be watch and mindful um, of temptation because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay. These are two very uh, uh, things that war against each other. Okay. And Satan knows exactly where to tempt you to get to your flesh. It's important to recognize this, you guys, because it is a spiritual battle. It's not just, I like the things I like, and that's that. No, Satan is trying to dangle a trap in front of you. And as long as you keep going into that trap, you guys, it's not good, okay? So you need to keep your eyes on Jesus and focus on things of the Spirit and put to death the things of the flesh, okay? Um, also, it says, oh, and, and then in the last part of that verse, it says, so that you do not do the things that you wish, okay? Yes, we're given free will. Yes, we have the choice to do this and that, but we there is consequences or, or rewards for each of our choices, okay? We can't just go around doing everything that we want because... Uh, in the end, we're going to have to stand before God. Galatians 5, 24 and 26 says, Those who are Christ have been crucified in the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. 1 Peter 2, 11 says, Beloved, I beg you, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts with which war against the soul. Okay, so Peter's warning you, you guys, if this stuff, it is a war. It is a battle. It's important to be mindful, you guys, okay? Um, and as you can hear, the baby's awake, so I got to wrap this up. Um, 1 Peter 4, 1 through 2 says, Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh... Arm yourselves also with the same mind, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. Okay, so this is saying, uh, number one, Christ suffered for us in the flesh. His flesh was tortured for us, you guys. Therefore, we should also put, put away the desires of our flesh, okay? Because once we have um, overcome temptation of our flesh, then we have ceased from sin, okay? And, and then the spirit within us can get stronger. And it also says that we no longer live for the flesh and we don't live for the lusts of men, but instead we live for the will of God, letting the spirit guide you instead of letting your flesh guide you, okay? All right, I'm almost done, guys. And also, the flesh is not just physical things, okay? It's not just... Um, Alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, um, sex, masturbation, pornography. I mean, these are like serious physical things, right? But also, when, the, when it's talking about the flesh, it's talking about emotional things too. Things that within you that cause your flesh to act out, okay? So 1 Peter 2, 1 and 3 says, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and evil speaking, as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. So Peter is saying, put aside uh, malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and evil speaking, okay? Because even though these aren't, you know, physical things, they're still emotional things that cause us to act out physically, okay? Um, 
And just like babe, babies, they need milk to grow, right? Babies need milk. They can't just chew on a steak, all right? They have to start with milk. And the milk, our spiritual milk, is the word of God, you guys. That is how we grow. That is how we grow in Christ, and that is how we get stronger in our spirit, okay? So think of uh, the word as like drinking uh, a bottle of milk like a baby. If you're a baby Christian, if you haven't been walking with the Lord long, you got to get in that word, you guys. That is the milk that is going to make you stronger so that you can move up to table food, okay? And start, you know, getting gifts of the spirit and then start warring in the spirit, okay? Because it is a spiritual battle. Anyways, um, my last scripture is James 1, 21 and 22. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive the meekness of the implanted word. There it is again. The word is so important, you guys, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not just hearers deceiving yourself. OK, so it's important. You guys, that we don't just listen to what God says, but that we do it, okay? We can't just be hearers of his word. We have to be doers of his word. Otherwise, we're just deceiving ourselves. All right, anyways, I hope you guys have a great day. I love you. Uh, read your Bible. If a lot of you guys, you know, I know that the, the King James is like the best translated version, but it's it's really like, you know, the thee and the thous and all that. It's really hard for uh, modern times to, to understand, you know, what all that stuff means. So if that translation is too difficult for you, I personally like the new King James, but um, I would recommend uh, the New Living Translation or... Um, you know, the NIV, just check out different translations and see which one makes sense to you. Because when you read the word, you want to be able to retain it and not just like reading it like, I don't even know what that means. Moving on, right? You want to be able to read it and say, oh, wow, I never knew that, right? So find a translation that makes sense to you, that speaks to you. Read it and let God and Jesus into your heart. Let him transform your life, you guys. I love you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.